Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. This is the Ion Tape Express, a way of taking your old analog tape collection and making it digital on your computer, Mac or Windows. Anyway, so we're going to give you the Mac demonstration. On Windows, unfortunately, we cannot because we don't have iTunes anymore for PC, uh, among other things. At least I don't think we have iTunes anymore for PC. I don't, I don't have iTunes for my Windows 10 computer because... I don't even really care that much for iTunes on a Windows computer. It belongs on a Mac. But anyways, so we do have GarageBand up though on my Mac. It's my late 2015 iMac and uh, of course it has Monterey operating system on it, the newest one out. And the software drivers that came with this unit will not work with Monterey. And likely not uh, Big Sur either. Probably not even Catalina. But below that, you should be okay in theory. Um, but on Snow Leopard, you're definitely fine with the included software. I got this package with the box actually for $6 at Value Village today. Always looking for a tech score. And I found something really cool because I have a lot of tape cassettes. And I want to get some of them, or at least a good part of them, swapped over to digital media. And my last dual cassette deck the belt died so I have to get that thing rebuilt and in the meantime I need something else to do this with so this is going to work. You can buy this on Amazon.ca uh, for about 66 bucks. It's a little bit newer version of this one so hey there may be some hope for that new Mac OS uh, to be able to run the driver software but I wouldn't hold your breath anyhow but you never know. Uh, now, the average star rating, of course, on Amazon for this unit, the new version of it, um, is actually sitting at an average of 3.5 out of 5 over 1,128 ratings, or reviews in this case. It's a pretty simplistic unit. There's a little slider here on the side. You just pop that to the side, it opens up. And you'll see there's a little trap door up in here. That's for batteries, so if you're going to actually use it as a portable Walkman, works pretty good for that. Um, otherwise, take the batteries out because you actually don't need them when you use the USB cable to transfer this stuff to your computer. It actually, the cable will power it. Or you can also use an optional power supply that you can buy separately, I suppose, um, which is a DC power supply and it's kind of like, um, they didn't include it. Why not? You'd think they would, but apparently not. And the deck does have single play or auto reverse. So you can just pop it there, put it in the continuous mode, and whoosh, away you go. She'll flip over and do her job for you. You can walk away, come back in about an hour, and you should be done. Then you can go separate all your files independently and save them and edit them any way you like. I would recommend not using the included software. I did try the included software out on my Mac Mini and I hate it, it sucks. Um, and it doesn't allow you any kind of editing capability. Um, so in order to do that, you would actually have to use Audacity, which is a program they do suggest. Um, otherwise, it just saves it as a regular MP3 for direct iTunes access. Um, and um, yeah, so at least that's on a Mac, on a PC. Um, you'd have to have iTunes as well, or Audacity. And at least Audacity, you could trim the files and edit the files, especially if there's one big one. You know, you kind of want to edit that stuff. You know, chop out the, the songs you don't want, keep the ones you do, make up your own compilations. You need software that's editing, uh, you can use for editing. And GarageBand is beautiful for that. GarageBand will actually do five bazillion times better than Audacity ever can. So, anyhow, you do get a pair of headphones with it, USB cable, like I said, the software. Now, I got this as a used unit. I did get the headphones, and uh, if I can find a way to wash the earpieces so that they're sanitary, I'll use them. If not, I'll just throw them in the garbage because I don't want somebody else's ear fungus going through my head. However, um, the USB cable was not in this package. I don't know why the last owners kept it. Um, but the manuals are all there, which was fine. And the manuals kind of, they're half not bad, but they kind of also suck at the same time because they're really not all that clear. I mean, it doesn't even mention anywhere in the manual that this thing uses AA batteries. So that's telling you something anyways. And Ion is a brand that you can also find, I believe, at the source um, for turntables and stuff. 
Now the volume control here will control the audio output via the USB as well as the headphone jack. So whatever you set it at and you're listening to your stuff as you're recording, because it's the only way you're going to hear things unless you're sneaky about it and you happen to have software that can handle the playthrough, uh, well, the Macintosh can, obviously. Um, and of course you can set your, your audio levels that way. So I put the volume about half, boost the rest of it through the Mac. So we're going to plug this in for you guys. And we're going to press play. Now I'm not going to allow the audio to play through. Um, because, yeah, YouTube would demonetize me for that because of copyrights. So if we just hit record, we can see it's playing through. The song is starting to record. Now, the default record level on GarageBand, of course, is sit pretty low. That's a very low file format, but also extremely clean. But I want, that also means we're going to have to turn the volume out on our stereo to get anything out of this. So we're going to actually bring this volume up until we see a good reasonable pattern that doesn't quite fill all of the red zone because we want to keep a little bit of that red zone there so that things don't distort on us. And I think right about there we're pretty good. So as this records you can hit the playthrough button on your computer which would be this one right here. You can see my mouse moving. Um, hover it. Um, input monitoring so you can listen to it so you know when to s stop your track and you'll be able to play it through after you record it anyways and trim your, your intro and your outro to your song so you get them more precise the way you want them. Now if that still isn't enough volume for you, you do have an EQ in here. You can pre-EQ everything but I would definitely advise against doing that to pre-recorded media because you would really screw it up. Uh, so if anything just raise the amount of output that it would give you in the end with still keeping this track clean. And then you can save it as an mp3 after when you're done and away you go. So my advice is forget the drivers even if you buy the new version of this that's out now which is not really any real different much. Um, but use GarageBand on a Mac or Audacity uh, on a PC or maybe you know SoundForge, Cubase, something that's a good recording DAW, use that on the PC. Don't use the included software because the included software is not going to allow you to do any trimming or cutting, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got to sit there and just go through the whole thing one at a time, which is a real pain too. I'd rather do all that editing later, but you're not going to be able to with the included software. Um, and the same thing goes for uh, iTunes. iTunes is not going to allow you to edit it, so I would suggest just forgetting the software, plug the sucker into your computer, Mac or a PC, and change your sound input to what you need. Now, that's the thing. On the preferences for GarageBand or whatever program you're using, uh, your input device, once your tape player is plugged in, it'll be active, of course, and it'll say USB PNP audio device for the input. That's what you want for your sound input source. And your output can be built-in output, uh, USB box if you want, or system setting, whatever. Okay, um, And that's it. You're done. Where you go, and you're off to taking analog and making it digital. So, um, not bad for $7, $6, if you ask me. And it works perfect, and it's in perfect condition. So, um, you know, I guess the person did their collection and said, eh, enough of that, don't need any more. But again, like I said, on Amazon they have the same same thing. It's a little bit different. The uh, door now opens uh, basically like a clamshell, like kind of like this now instead of like this. You're now you know up normal uh, kind of thing. So they have changed that about it. Um, they may have changed some other features as well, but either way, um, it's not bad. And for sixty-six dollars, even buying a brand new unit. It may be pretty good for $66. I mean, I paid six, and we'll see how good it does. I mean, I had to find my own cable because the last owner kept there. So at least you'll get everything when you buy a brand new one. So it's kind of worth going the brand new route if you can. But even if you find a used one that's still in perfect shape and it works great, hey, what the heck, you know? But under 10 bucks is a great deal. Now, average rating on this thing on Amazon, like I said, is about three and a half out of five. 
I would probably put that a little bit closer to a 4 out of 5, to be honest. I think it's worth a 4 out of 5. I mean, it does come with a lot in the package. The unfortunate part about this particular unit, um, I have no idea when this exact version of it was released, but it will not work with Monterey or Big Sur with its own software. But, without using its own software, it works perfect with GarageBand. So that means on any Mac that you have that has GarageBand, this will work with, okay? As far as your PCs go, you're going to need Audacity for your editing. You can use the included software, uh, providing you also have access to iTunes on the PC. If you don't, well, you're going to have to uh, figure that out on your, your own on that one. So, which means, hmm, Audacity it is. And that's all you get to use. And then you can resave it as an MP3 and play it back on your computer or phone or however you're going to do with your MP3s later. But kind of nice you can listen through at the same time as doing it. Um, whether you're doing it computer-wise and playing it out loud or you can plug in the headphones, do it in private. It's kind of up to you. So you've got some options there. So anyways, that's what I got for you guys uh, today on that one. Other than that, I did score a USB extension cable for about 3 bucks, which is kind of handy. Um, not No sense in showing you that. It's just a general USB extension cable anyway, so whoopee ding. Uh, but this is a pretty cool little unit. Um, but like I said, the instructions are kind of sucky. Um, and the software does not work on any current Mac OS. Uh, but does work for sure on Snow Leopard. I will be testing that software on a few other different Mac OS's that I have on other Macs in the house. And, um, you know, maybe I'll edit the video in the description at that point to say, okay, it works on these versions of the Mac OS that I know of for sure, for sure. And then you'll be able to read it then. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll definitely catch you on the next one. See ya.